Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, Watercolor Impressions. Creating mood is really important in any kind of painting. Even though I took this reference an early evening, I imagined to be a moody painting. Before we go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started. As always, I'll provide the drawing template and reference. Check my video description to download it. You can see in the reference, even though it's an evening, early evening scene, I want to uh, make this scene and change the mood into a really a rainy moody painting. As a painter, uh, you're telling a story and you want to evoke emotion what's in your painting. And that's uh, one of the secret recipe for a painting. When a viewer see your painting, they have to feel what's the mood and what time is it painted and uh, what you're conveying from your painting. When you do that, it's always a successful painting. So uh, uh, you can see, uh, I kept my drawing really simple as possible. I'm a big fan of keeping everything simple. Even though there's thousands of things happening in my scene, I will simplify, simplify, even simplify it even further. And I also have another tutorial how to simplify your uh, painting as well. You can check it out uh, uh, in the description. And I'll start with the first wash. Uh, since it's a rainy day, so I want to make it uh, really like a overcast. So I use a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, and a little bit of uh, neutral tint in it. And as it comes down, I'm going to warm up in the mid brown uh, because there's going to be a lot of warmth in the foreground. As you can see, the whole color is warmth. And as it comes to the foreground, I want to make it a little bit darker using neutral tint. And I'm also putting some lines uh, here and there uh, for uh, for the road, for the streetcar. Uh, that's using neutral tint. You can see, uh, this is the first wash. I don't try uh, go crazy with the colors. Uh, this is just trying to make to see uh, what's exactly in the scene. Uh, there's no logic to it. I just see color as it is, but uh, I just put uh, as light as possible. And I don't use a lot of pigment in my brush. But when it comes to darker pigment, I'm pretty sure that the streetcar has a darker part in it. Even though it looks darker now, uh, watercolor have a tendency of uh, getting lighter as it dries out. There is one more uh, technique as a secret for uh, painting which you can make it moody is through edges. And you can see once I put the CN tower it got blurry and it went in distance. Because since my watercolor paper is wet and I can put any colors in there and it will make it blurry and it will push everything in distance. Even in reality when you go out if you see in rainy day and you can see things in distance gets blurrier and lighter as it, as it recedes. So I'm trying to exploit that uh, technique in uh, in this moody painting because that shall just mood and stuff. But as it comes down at the bottom of the mid crown, I just uh, add a little bit of darker value to enhance the light in my painting. So this is the foreground element in the mid crown element. Uh, this is the building. Uh, this is kind of like a small art building where people stand and uh, to get on the bus. And you could see there's also two garbage cans. I also add the detail because that helps us to add some reflections, which is receding to the foreground, and that gives a beautiful lead in for our painting. In all my paintings, uh, I try to add uh, people in my painting because that's such a skill on our painting as well. And uh, I also have uh, add like a major figure. So those are the people in my painting have more details than the rest of the people in my painting. Because I want to create, create them so that they lead us to the foreground element and they lead us to our focal point. And you can see as soon as I add that figure, all the focus will go on uh, to the streetcar to that person. And he's also be a good element to reflecting on the streetcar as well. As you can see in the reference, there's also thousand, thousands of things reflecting on the streetcar, but I will simplify it too. Uh, as you know, I'm a big fan of simplifying things and I'm just adding some background and distance and uh, I'm adding some uh, street lights and street lights uh, also gives a little bit of good scale in our painting. And you can see um, I added the trees uh, at the bottom but I forget to add it at the top of the top of, top of the little hut. So once we added it, it framed the hut a little bit better. And I'm also adding uh, uh, three other people in distance. Uh, they are standing inside the hut even though it's raining to show I'm one person carrying an umbrella. I'll just leave it as white. And uh, it's really hard to make uh, figures tiny in a nine by 12, but I try to uh, create like simple shape as possible. And uh, this is a wonderful thing about uh, Toronto. The street lights are yellow in color and that gives a little bit of uh, color scheme in our painting and gives a little bit of color in our painting as well. 
and i made it a little bit bright because uh, it gets washed off and rain so there's no dirt in the street lights so now i'm adding some darker pigments so the street car um, is not coming in the foreground so i want to increase my pigment consistency and you can also see uh, i increased the pigment consistency on the street car too as soon as we added that uh, increase the pigment consistency in our street car the old street car uh, came in the foreground element and i'm also trying not to uh, make everything uh, perfectly uh, sharp since it's a moody painting we are trying to create mood using edges so that's what i'm trying to do even though there is an edge there and uh, this is uh, my favorite part to do uh, creating reflections and it's a quite easy process to do and it took me a while to learn it so you have mere seconds to uh, do this reflection uh, before it dries out i'll throw in the colors whatever i see in uh, the elements in the midground and the people and i also put some darker pigments here and there to make the reflections uh, flowing to the foreground and you can see uh, watercolor it paints by itself and it's a beautiful medium to uh, paint rainy paintings and reflection paintings as well and i get this question a lot at my art market a lot of people ask me um, how long this painting took me to do it and it took me around 45 to 45 minutes but they don't realize that um, i've done uh, hundreds of rainy paintings before and, and i've got used to the medium and everything so now it's your turn, uh, take my reference and drawing template and uh, let's see what you can come up with. Thanks again for watching this how to change mood in your painting video tutorial with me. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section. And if you want me to cover any of the subjects in watercolors, uh, write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com or comment below. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from your channel. And uh, good luck with your painting folks.